Hi, I'm Jason Stowe, and today I'm going to give you a demo of PsychoCloud, our service for deploying full HPC clusters inside of Amazon EC2 infrastructure in minutes instead of months. We're also going to talk about a new cluster compute GPU instance that enables GPU-based calculations on the Amazon cloud. Now, CycleCloud provisions fully secured clusters with shared file systems and your choice of multiple schedulers, as well as frameworks for running open, proprietary, and licensed software in a secure way that's constantly supported and maintained as a service on Amazon infrastructure. So these clusters as a service enable you to deploy full-on HPC environments in minutes rather than months. Now on to our demo. We are going to be dealing with a new type of instance that has two current generation NVIDIA processors, two current generation Intel Xeon Nehalem based processors, as well as a 10 gigabit per second ethernet backplane. Right, now in the interest of time, we're gonna do a real quick rundown on creating an SGE cluster. So first I'm gonna log in to the CycleCloud interface. And we've created an account especially for this demo. Um, and once I log in, you can actually get a depiction of all of the clusters that you have up and running, exactly how many execute nodes they have, whether the cluster is started or stopped, um, whether or not it has auto start and auto shutdown enabled. And these are two features that allow you to have nodes booted up when there's workload that needs to be run or shut down when there isn't any work left to do. So essentially, before we get into that specific cluster environment, I'm going to show you exactly how to create a cluster, but instead of it taking weeks or months, we can do it in minutes on top of Amazon's infrastructure. So the first step is you have to name your cluster, and today we're going to create an SGE pool for GPUs, so I'm going to call this something uh, boring. I'm going to call it SGE GPU pool. I'm going to pick the pool type and pick a GPU cluster uh, with SGE, and you'll notice here that we have Condor and Torque enabled as well, so most of the open source schedulers are available in this environment. Um, I'm going to need a GPU username, so I'm going to actually do something GPU.user. I'm going to pick a password. Um, in this case, I really don't need to use an SSH key, but I can have an SSH key uploaded as part of my account so that I can run passwordless SSH commands f directly from my desktop. I also can choose to have a static IP address for the head node, which means every time I start the head node up, it will have the same IP. And this is really helpful for using DNS with CycleCloud clusters. In this case, I'm actually going to pick a really small shared file system, and the, all the following options deal with the shared file system. I want a really fast format time, so I'm only going to do 20 gigabytes, although you can pick uh, in excess of a terabyte if you want in order to, um, to maximize the storage available on the scheduler. I'm also going to not have any encryption available, even though we do have 128-bit through 256-bit AES encryption uh, available for all of the shared file system data. And we can also pick to have the clusters themselves have persistent disks. And in this case, um, we really don't care about that. We're not going to be turning this node off and then expecting all of the data to still be there when we turn it back on again later. Uh, but that is an option and it is something you can definitely want to do on, on most normal clusters. Next on the execute node side, our default execute node, just like if you're looking at a, a quote sheet from a major vendor of server hardware for a, a cluster you're about to procure internally, we have a different disk sizes on the execute nodes. And the key impact here is the time it takes to format. So here again, for the purposes of the demo, we're actually going to pick a very small size, 20 gigabytes, because it's really fast to format. We're going to also have a maximum number of nodes for our auto start so that we only grow the cluster to a certain size uh, in order to make sure that we're never paying more than we should be at any particular hour for this cluster. So in this case, I only want to have at most eight execute nodes. I'm going to enable auto start, and I'm also going to enable auto stop so that if there's no work to do on the cluster, my execute nodes go away. Um, the machine type in this case is going to be the GPU four-core hyper-threaded boxes with 23 gigs of RAM. And I'm actually really excited about this. I can pick any scheduler I want. Because I have an SGE cluster in this case, I'm going to be using an SGE GPU execute node. 
So at this point, we've specified the size of the shared file system, and rather than picking something in the terabytes range, we've picked something in the 20 gigabyte range for speed reasons. We specified whether we want it encrypted, we've talked about the users that we want to have be able to log into this environment, and we've also specified everything about the execute nodes that can potentially run here. So now I'm gonna click the Create Cluster button. We actually have a whole set of R and life science apps and chemistry apps and other kinds of mathematical applications that are available to be installed by default on these clusters. In this case, however, you know, we're happy just spinning up a blank cluster because we're really just going to run a benchmark. So once I hit the create cluster button, you'll notice I now have an SGE GPU cluster in my UI. And all I have to do is hit the start button here. It's in the stopped state. And the tooltip says cycle server isn't running yet and the cluster isn't running yet. So essentially, I'm going to click this start button here, and what you'll see is that this cluster now has some pending requests that actually start up the central management and scheduling nodes of this cluster. Now, we've already pre-baked uh, a cluster. We've actually started one up. We've started up uh, four execute nodes for it. If I wanted to start more execute nodes, I could click this start execute nodes button, select the type of machine I want, select the instance type I want, and the number of nodes and just enter it here and click start. However, we're happy right now with having four boxes running. This is actually good enough for us. So I'm going to click on the, the name of the cluster in order to get some more details about it. And on the right hand side here, you'll see that this has been running since November 8th at 3.12 p.m. We've We've had an estimated hourly cost associated with this. We've also got um, an SSH address for the head node. Now, this might be an IP address if I had selected a static IP for this cluster, but in this case, we're just happy using the host name uh, that it was provided to us originally. So now let's log in. So I'm going to go to command prompt. I'm going to SSH to my GPU user at this head node. I'm going to enter in my password, and now you'll see the, the standard cycle cloud uh, text to log in. And this shows you that you're logged into the SGE scheduler uh, for this cycle cloud cluster. You're in my account where the first name and last name is GPU Demo, and that's me right now. And the pool name, you'll notice the cluster name is GPU Cluster, and this is exactly the same as the cluster name that was in our UI. So we basically are inside this GPU cluster now. And if we type QHOST, we should actually see four execute nodes available. Also, if we type DF, we should see that there's a 20 gigabyte mounted file system that's now available and it's shared across all of these nodes. And you can see that in the mount exports shared directory uh, is approximately 20 gigabytes in size. So now I'm going to sh switch to that shared location. And you'll see in, inside this shared directory, we have some pre-populated bin directories where I can create sim links to applications that I install. I have my scratch directory. I've got a Pi simulator as an example run. I also have something called shock. And shock is where we're going to go today. Shock is the GPU benchmark created by the Oak Ridge National Lab Future Technologies Group. And when we go to the shock directory, we're going to notice a final results.csv. That's actually the output of running this benchmark against an execute node. And we have a shock.sh, which runs this uh, benchmark for us. So I'm going to do a Q sub uh, because I'm using SGE here. And I'm going to submit this shock.sh to run. Um, and now that this job has been submitted, I'm going to actually take a really quick look at the final results that will actually come out when this is done. And what you can see is that there's benchmarks for all of the memory throughput and floating point uh, capabilities for various sort, uh, scans, fast Fourier transforms, and other methodologies on top of the two M2050 GPUs that are present inside this box. And you'll actually notice the max flops benchmark uh, that's present here in terms of gigaflops, we're getting about 967 each. And that's fairly consistent every time we've run this. We get really consistent results uh, from this benchmarking application. So now if I type QSTAT, I should be able to see the results of my earlier QSUB. And this job, the shock job that I submitted earlier, you can see is running. You can see it's running on this uh, on the all queue here. And we essentially have, if you look at QHOST, um, an elevated load average on the IP 10, 17, 129, 106 box here that is actually running this job for us.
So today we've seen how you can use CycleCloud to create entire HPC environments inside of Amazon EC2 that take advantage of the latest Intel Xeon and NVIDIA GPU based instances. And just like internal clusters, you get SSH access to these boxes with your favorite schedulers deployed and 10 gigabit per second interconnect. But these clusters can be sized to the jobs that you have in hand, unlike internal clusters. CycleCloud, full HPC clusters in 10 minutes on Amazon.